If I see one other person 3D print a fishing lure like this, I'm gonna lose my friggin' mind. You're doing it all wrong, bro. Let's dive in. So I know what you're saying, but every fishing lure I have is made like this. Two parts glued together with stuff inside. That's gotta be the way to do it, right? Wrong. They're made like that for one very specific reason, their manufacturing process, which is injection molded plastic. ABS, polycarbonate, there's a few different flavors there, but by and large, it's injection molded plastic and it has its limitations. Most of the limitations revolve around the thickness of the material that you can reliably injection mold. If you inject too much plastic, it won't cool in time to be ejected and deform and cause all kinds of problems. That's why you typically see very, very thin walls in fishing lures, because they can't do anything different. But you can with 3D printing. So the other limitation to injection molding is undercuts and draft angles. In injection molding machines, these, the mold comes together, plastic is injected, it comes apart, and there's literally these things called ejector rods that push the part out into a bin, and it just goes back and forth, like that clapping monkey thing, right? Over and over and over again. And so in order for that whole mechanism to work, it has to be able to push that part out of the mold, right? So you, you can't have anything holding that part in in the mold, like some sort of uh, overlap, also known as an undercut, right? That's gonna, that's gonna cause it to hang in there. I mean, technically you can have those things, but it drives the cost astronomically high because you need more complex pins to you know, push to the side and then push it out or some kind of craziness like that. So by and large for fishing lures, you know, 10, $12 part total, uh, you're not gonna invest that kind of money in that kind of process. So why do lure companies do it this way? Well, one, it's kind of the way it's always been done. In the super early days of fishing lures, you'll find a lot of them were cast in resin, uh, solid resin typically, maybe some things put in there to help them float, but by and large, it was solid resin poured largely by hand. Like they might've had some machines to help them out, but it was very, very time consuming to do that, right? Look at any of the swim bait makers these days that make them by hand, right? There's a reason these things are 50, 60, 100, 200, $1,500, right? Because that is a very labor intensive process to pour things by hand with resin. It just is. So the same thing happens with wooden lures, right? You can automate that process fairly well with kind of CNC machines these days, uh, four axis CNC machines, kind of a lathe setup. Uh, but still, it's a very labor intensive process that kind of makes one, two, three, four at a time. Uh, with injection molding, you know, you can crank out thousands an hour if you want to. And the cost per part is very, very small because plastic is cheap. So the reason the fishing lure industry went largely to injection molded plastic is the cost per part is extremely low and you can produce them very, very quickly in injection molding machines, right? You make two halves, pump it out. It's probably something in the range of I'm just gonna make up a number, but you know, 10 seconds per lure to make the two halves, right? Obviously there's more stuff going on later, which we'll talk about in a minute, but you know, to make that one thing, it's very fast. The material is very cheap, you know, plastic beads that are melted. Uh, I'm again, making up a number kind of off the top of my head, but probably less than two cents in material cost. Uh, the large cost in an injection molded lure is the mold itself. Uh, those can take tens of thousands of dollars to make a proper injection molding mold. And, um, and so you have this huge upfront cost, but once you've made that investment, that mold will last quite a long time. So when you need to make another mold, it's generally cheaper as well because all the design work has been done already. You just kind of pop that into the CNC machine, make another mold and go on down the road. So if you're a large manufacturing company like Rapala or you know, uh, Berkeley or any of these big players, right? That initial investment is, well, it's not cheap. It's certainly, you know, $15,000 for a mold is easy to handle. And also the minimum order quantities that are generally required for injection molded parts, which are in the neighborhood of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, that's an investment again, that you can easily take on if you're a large company. For a small maker like us, that's too much money, bro the rent is too damn high. 
I know why people go down this route in 3D printing, because they look at a lure, they see it's made that way, and they think that is the way you must make a lure. No, they're made that way specifically because of that injection mold and manufacturing process. That is the only reason they're made that way. If they can make them some other way, cheaper, they would. But now we have 3D printing. We are not bound by those constraints. We can have undercuts. We can have, we don't need to worry about draft angles. We don't need to worry about gluing things together. Now I don't know what you're thinking, but bro, I need to put a rattle in there, but bro, I need to do a through wire, but bro, I need to do blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you can do all that without having two halves. It's not that difficult. So one of the ways I put weight into my lures, and again, this is mostly uh, resin 3D printing, but the same principles apply to FDM printing, is I just put more material in the spot I want weight, right? It's very simple. A solid resin has weight. If you, if you print a solid resin lure, it is gonna sink probably pretty fast. So you just build up resin where you want that weight to be. That's number one. Number two, you just introduce cavities in there. You can put ball bearings or whatever weighting material you want to put in there. S put a set screw in there, screw it in place, bingo, you have weight. And by the way, a set screw has weight too. So maybe you just need a set screw weight in there and your problem is solved. Same thing with rattles. You can put rattles in there. You can, my favorite trick is with the set screw is take two set screws drive one way up in there, put some ball bearings in there, cap it with a set screw, you got a nice little rattle. So I've shown in my previous videos where you can put them in the eyes of lures if you want that side to side shaking motion to be very pronounced. Again, super easy process to do. And oh, by the way, you're not constrained by where you put these weights and balances and all this stuff. You can make a lure have a side wobble balance. You can make it have weight in the back instead of the front. You know, you, you can put the weight wherever you want to. It's very, very simple to do in 3D printing. So take advantage of your manufacturing advantage when you're designing your lure, right? The biggest downfall in 3D printing, and the reason it's not used by these big guys, is cost and time to market, right? I can print a lot of lures 3D printing, resin 3D printing, but I can't do 100,000 in a couple of days, right? That technology doesn't exist these days, but look, you're a dude or a girl in your garage making lures. You don't need all that, dude. Are you ready to invest $20,000 in an injection mold and probably $50,000 in a minimum order? Probably not. And if you get to that point, you can redesign the lure to make it act the same way it does with injection mold. I think, uh, was it Buka Bates? Somebody who just got bought out. Uh, came out with their their glide bait that's like the ABS glide bait, right? They redesigned it to be an ABS injection molded so they bring the cost way down. It's totally possible. So stop splitting those things in half. Stop gluing them together. If you want to learn how to do it the 3D printing way, click right here. Here's that video that I go over to the design kind of parameters. And in the future, we're going to be testing how strong these 3D printed lures really are. Take care, tight lines.